Hello, everyone. My name is Vera Kavura. I am a pastel artist from Ukraine. My favorite and main topic is flowers. I always draw from life and only real flowers, always in the daylight. Daylight brings out the beauty of flowers more than anything. Flowers attract us with their color and shape, and it is best emphasized by the sunlight. Just like in nature, the flowers bloom and open in the sun. Same when you draw. You can see all the details, the tones and hues only in the daylight. What kind of materials you will need? I always use gloves to protect my hands as well as to protect the drawing from the oil and the moisture coming from my skin. You will also need tissue to clean your hands every time you change the color. Paper. I work on Art Spectrum Color Fix Smooth Paper. This paper is very smooth with a special finish, but if you can't find it, you can always use pastel matte paper or any other paper, even Canson Mitanta, but the smoother side of it. The smoother your paper is, the easier it will be for you to refine and detail your drawing. I use pan pastel in my work. I've assembled these color sets myself with the colors I use most. These jars are easily removed. You can keep it just like that. They're all sold individually, but it is very handy to have such a palette. I made this set with the colors I use primarily for the foliage, and the other one is for the flowers, but you don't need to have all of these tones. Because we use pan pastel for underpainting, we really need to have only the primary colors. So if your composition is pink, you will need pink and a couple lighter tones to create some blends. Pan pastel blends and layers very well. For application, I use sponges. Here is one set, but I mostly use the oval sponge. It easily recreates the shape of a petal. Let me show you why we need it. Here is a rose. Pan pastel allows us to quickly prepare the underpainting by blocking the shape in. I don't need to outline the drawing with a pencil. Instead, I use pan pastel. It lays on paper in very translucent layers. I usually add the undertones present in a flower straight away. That's why you should always select the pan pastel tones based on the nature you are drawing. Here you can see the thin translucent layer of pan pastel. The more of it you use, the more opaque it gets. Just a few moves and you form the primary shape of the flower. This is why I like to use this tool. For smaller details and elements, I use these tools. You can change the applicators.
Вот, сменные. Ну, в принципе, хватает. They last quite well. You can simply wipe them in the process. And this is how you use it. You pick the color and draw the details like the foliage here, and with one move you can create the shape you need. Происходит просто... Вот беру, берешь краску, и вот для того, чтобы более можно было детально там прорисовать, ну, особенно там, если зелени не хватает, ну, вот опять же, одним движением как бы можно создать то, что тебе нужно. For larger shapes, I use the sponge, if you want to show the leaves, for example. This is the first stage of drawing, and that's when I use pan pastel most. We use it occasionally throughout the process, and you will see it during our lessons. So, again, your primary colors depend on the nature you draw from. If it's a pink rose, you need to have pink pan pastel and a few lighter, warmer tones. Here, I can add yellow or greenish tones into the white. I hardly ever use pure white in my drawings. Вот. Или вот какие-то зеленоватые оттенки. Next, pastel. Here is my basic working set. If it's not plein air, you probably will have a lot of pastels as well. What should you pick? Again, I start from nature. It's better to pick the tones you need right away. What can you see here? For instance, this milky yellow, I lay it down. The subdued green, I pick it up. Brighter green tones, I also take it. I can see some warm tones. I pick them too. Я вот ну, сюда как бы выбираю. Я вижу и какие-то э, теплые оттенки. Тоже вот я беру. Mm. То есть... Э, Basically, it's quite simple. Everything you can see, it's going to go in your palette. I took a photo of the tones I have chosen initially, but in the process, when you are working with nature, you can see finer tones, hues. Here, for instance, I see a pinkish edge, so I prepare it straight away. And so you can always expand this palette. Here you better prepare your palette according to the photo of the bouquet, not the photo of the pastel tones I picked. Later, when you work from life, your main task as an artist will be to see all the tones and the details, and only then to portray it. You'll learn how to do so during my lessons, but seeing is a skill each artist must develop on their own when interacting with nature. In the first stages, you can apply pastel in quite rough, wide strokes. I often use the side of the stick. Interesting feature of the paper here is that it closely replicates the texture of the petal. It's very convenient when you draw nature. Now the primary spot that we blocked in with pan pastel is getting thicker. Some areas stay in the back. They remain translucent, and others are moved towards the viewer. These areas are thicker, more opaque. You can see that I blur and blend the colors quite a lot to create the illusion of the tones that I am seeing, and the gloves help me do it very gently, without leaving prints or adding greasiness.
Pastel can be both soft and hard. It depends on the vision of every artist, how they see and perceive things. You can make very gentle strokes or use more pressure. The same stick can give very different results depending on the pressure. And it's important to learn to use the spectrum from the light translucent one to the very opaque one. We always start with light translucent shapes and at later stages we will use thick opaque strokes. Всегда на первом этапе это что-то легкое полупрозрачное и на конечном этапе Вот оно становится уже более плотным. Почему нужна более твердая пастель? Why is it good to have hard pastel? Because it leaves more defined marks on paper. If I need to accentuate the edge, for example, it doesn't need to be blurred. That's the great thing about it, that the stroke itself looks like the edge. I add some warmth whenever I see it. Do not be afraid to try the tones. I never try tones on the side. You should apply them directly to your drawing. You'll feel it straight away if the tone belongs there, if it blends in well, or if it's foreign here and it doesn't work. But even if you made a mistake, it doesn't mean that the tone isn't present here. It just may not be as obvious. No, даже если вы ошиблись, вот... Это не значит, что этого оттенка там нету. Он может быть просто не так ярко выражен. The more layers you have in your drawing, the more you search, the more interesting, more complex your drawing becomes, because our world is laced with various colors and tones and spectrums. Наш мир пронизан этими отражениями, спектрами, разными лучами. But it's important to keep it clear, and that is why you need to learn to use pressure correctly and feel the pastel. Once you can feel it with your fingers, you don't need to know what brand of pastel it is. Here I have a mix of them all. Just touching the pastel, I already know if it's hard or soft, and you can only get it with experience. <laughs> Что это, как бы твердая она или мягкая, как бы вот это это вот с опытом приходит однозначно. Дальше по материалу. Back to materials. I sometimes use pencils. It doesn't happen often, and you don't need a lot of them. Карандаши. Но не нужно там какое-то большое большое количество их. Я использую. Here I use dark sepia by Koenor to deepen and define the details in the foliage. And one lighter green to accentuate the edge. You can also use pastel for it, but sometimes it's easier to do with a pencil, especially if you are new to drawing with pastels. This is it. When we start working, you may add some other materials and tools, but the basic is paper, pastel, and life, nature. Материалы вы будете где-то использовать, может добавлять свои какие-то методы, но основа это, конечно, бумага, пастель и натура. Our first lesson is called Spring Flowers, Tree Peonies and Lilac, Drawing from Life. This lesson is going to be very easy. It's suitable both for beginners and for those who are interested in this topic of botanical art, floristics. The special features of these compositions is that our principal focus is on the flowers. They are the main character and the primary topic. It's not going to be a still life painting with a surface and a vase. The creative process is dictated by the key element in the bouquet, the flower that draws most of our attention. It becomes our focal point, the spot we start with and move on to forming a composition from it. 
This lesson is recorded in real time. There is no haste. You can recreate the whole process after me in a calm manner in your own pace. And what's more important, the process is so easy that I'm confident that after this lesson you will be able to create various compositions, regardless of their complexity, the abundance of flowers and leaves. There are certain stages that we will learn. First stage is blocking primary spots in. Second is refining and then detailing. And this process is natural. When we're looking at a bouquet, we like the flowers, the composition. But then we're first drawn to one flower, and it takes most of our attention. And the rest is entourage that adds to the charm. Since I'm drawing from life, from real flowers, the creative process here starts with forming a bouquet. I have seasonal spring flowers here, tree peonies and lilacs, that I've chosen based on contrast. The large blooms of peonies surrounded by the smaller blossoms of the lilac. All of them also match by color palette. Lilac tones flow from the darker ones to the lighter ones, and they're supported by the backdrop tone of the paper I've selected. I took a photo for you, but I will draw from the fresh flower bouquet. That's why the perspective might change a little throughout the process. But it doesn't really matter, because when you draw from life, the flowers also change slightly. They turn towards the light. It's more important to understand the technique, and then you can easily replicate it with any flowers, any nature. So I start with forming the composition and block the basic shapes in. The easiest way to start is with the primary element. In this case, the flower I start from is the white peony. That's why I start with roughly blocking in its shape. I intentionally placed it away from the center, approximately around the so-called golden means section. Further, I am moving from it, the white peony, to blocking in the rest of the peony flowers because everything else serves as the composition of secondary flowers. But for now, we need to focus on the primary shapes. I don't use bright white tones straight away. Instead, I pick up light mid-tones, adding lilac and similar warm undertones into them as I go. Once I have blocked the primary flower, the white peony in, it's very easy to move away from it. It's not located in the center of the paper, but it is the center of our composition. Next, I block the large pink flower in, and now I'm working on the peonies that are turning away from me. But still, they are the primary color spots in the composition. Please note that I turned the flower on top more towards me, but you can either follow my drawing or draw from the photo above. It doesn't matter. It's important to add green hues into the undertone, because green tones are always present in the flowers. And now I simply refine. It's much easier at this point, because we already have the primary shapes to work from, and we know where the color spots should be laid. I continue with further refining. See how I achieve the dark shades by using the greenish undertones. I don't use black, gray, or brown tones, but rather the warm pinkish or greenish undertones, even if the flower is white. This way we have a sort of development. The focal point is on the white flower, and then we move on to the other flowers.
While I'm forming the composition, I can still decide on the size of flowers. At this point, we can enlarge them a bit or stick to their actual sizes. But either way, I follow the shape and the volume of the flower and form flower petals. Here I can add darker spots right away. It'll be later covered by pastel, but it's okay. At this moment, I'm only making a pattern of the flowers, a layout of the whole bouquet. The remaining detailing will be much easier once you have such a foundation. Now I begin defining the individual petals. Initially we started with the primary shapes, and now we are moving on to refining. This sponge is very handy. It's got an oval shape, and it works very well for forming petal shapes, especially on this size of paper. It can be used for various types of flowers as well. Plus, you can use the side of the sponge for detailing and defining the sharper parts. Плюс использование более там боковой стороны можно как-то более детально делать, более острые части. Дальше процесс я называю как Now this process I call contrast intensification. I block in the darkest sections with pastel right away because here we need a rich dark tone. We'll be adding and defining more of it later, but for now I need to use something as a reference to proceed with the color. I need the depth and the contrasts. This video is not fast forwarded. This is the normal, relaxed speed I draw with. There is no need to rush here. Nevertheless, the whole process will take just about an hour, not because I do something very quickly, but because I do things more precisely. A very important point here is adding a bright pink tone into the flower, since the most outstanding feature of the flower is its color. Flowers in black and white will never be perceived the same as in color. This is the unique characteristic of flowers, and we need to emphasize it and make sure to keep the actual color of the flower. This is the process of working on the volume. Regardless of the color and the shape of the flower, it always has a certain volume and fullness. All of the shadows we render through the subdued greenish tones. Green is a very harmonious color with any plant because every plant has some undertone of green in it. Plus, the foliage that always goes alongside the flowers also passes on its reflection and influence. All these tones I'm adding now, I kind of blur them to instill and merge them into the general shape. It was just outlined earlier, and now I'm intensifying it to achieve more volume. But I work very gently. The shapes are still very indistinct, not detailed. In my second lesson, I will be drawing irises. 
Well, irises are the flowers that are very much loved by everyone and a beautiful form of nature and maybe a favorite flower for a lot of gardeners. Many may think it's difficult to draw because of its specific petals. But on the contrary, when you are drawing, this character, this distinctiveness, it only helps. Because our main task as painters is to capture this unique feature of the flower and to portray it, when the flower is so clearly pronounced with its petal shapes and color tones, it only makes our work easier. We won't be drawing a bouquet here. We will concentrate on the irises themselves, their shapes and forms. This lesson again is going to be very easy. We will start the process from the principal color spots and then move on to detailing and showing the particularity of this flower. I begin to lay the basic shapes and compositions under the pastel. This paper is very smooth and the pastel lays down in a very thin layer. This allows us to continue working very easily already directly with pastel. Also, it mixes well with each other. Therefore, I give and take select colors, add warmth where it's necessary immediately, and creating a spot shape from purple-pink shades, such as flowers have at the core. This turns out as its underlay. It allows us to catch the shape, to create a composition very quickly. Since the sponge is round in shape, it repeats the shape of the petals. It's all very approximate. Now I'm not laying in some light shades. It's just a purple-pink mass. But at the same time, I'm laying out the warmth that's in the middle of the flower. I'm painting this from nature. This bouquet of live irises is in front of me, but it's maybe a slightly different view. Although I'm always checking with nature, I can adjust a little. Now the position of this bud. And the shape. A little shifting as I like it, but basically I still stick to the composition because I always originally compose in a way that it is easier for me. Pastel and this sponge allow me to not just approximate, but also quite accurately to lay the shape. And sometimes I even leave some parts in pastel because it creates a nebula and the volume and shape that I need. In any case, I start with a general location of the flowers, then I begin to refine the shape. Now I'm adding light, color, and lighter flowers. This is just a secondary add-on just to make everything easier in process for yourself. But shapes and color are already recognizable. I'm just refining now. It's always easier to clarify when the main spot has already been laid. And then I can already start to separate the shape of the petals in this spot. Always says here, I go in the direction, in the shape, and I show this warmth. This also helps me in the future. For smaller shapes, you can use this kind of tool. I often make stems with it, some thin elements. 
especially when the stems are in the background so they are smooth in space and don't climb to the foreground. It's also very easy because it has a flat shape and you can, by changing directions, create what you need. I make more contrast in the next step. Now I am taking the coal. I'm laying in the darkest places in order to more convey the shape and the saturation of tone. This can be done with dark pastel. Now I want to try the coal. It's easy to blend in. But also the feature of this paper is that it's very smooth. It kind of slips and gives it very smooth transitions. I'm separating them with these contrasts, and I'm already allocating in the space what is farther, what is closer. And I'm also making the shape of the flowers more precise. The iris is very interesting in structure, shape, and volume. You can learn a lot from it. And in fact, despite such an interesting shape, it's quite an easy flower for painting. There is a dark pastel now coming in. We always need to have the darkest colors. Purple, very bright. It's needed to give us even more tone, a very deep one. Moreover, these flowers in the photo may look lighter, but they have a rich color. Therefore, I'm using the darkest pastel that I have with purple and burgundy shades. It's like I'm not so much painting with some strokes as I'm doing something that looks like watercolor underpainting. These are still, as it is, shapes. They're just a little bigger, as if they're clarified, as if sharpening is introduced. I always put it like this. That is, not just smearing, but repeating the shape of the petal. First, it makes things easier, especially the flowers in front of me. And it's very easy to follow the direction. Now, this is more for the second plane, but in fact, I'm putting it in immediately so I don't get distracted anymore. And to leave it so, it is more conventional. Blurry, that is the second plane but at the same time, it conveys the character of the petal. In fact, the iris is quite simple in structure. There are two or three such petals raised up and a third plane lowered as downward. The main thing is how to trace this and not be distracted by this lacy, very curly shape. And this is the rich color which still takes on the reflection of the environment we are also showing now. So it is like a little bit of a mirror surface where the daylight is reflected into the colder tones and goes into the more intense inner warmer colors.
Flowers adorn the most important events of our lives, weddings, birthdays, and so much more. They represent joy and pleasure, friendship and purity, forgiveness and also death. Few artists can successfully capture what flowers represent. Fortunately, there's a simple way to do it. Vera Kavura is a Ukrainian artist who has mastered the art of floral paintings. And she's going to show you how to harness the emotional power of flowers to captivate your viewers. In her brand new video, Painting the Flowers of Ukraine, Vera is going to show you a counterintuitive approach to painting flowers just by using colors to create shape and form. No drawing, sketching, or long preparation needed. All you have to do is follow along and listen as Vera demonstrates two different bouquets, spring flowers and irises. Vera will also share insights to help you understand the true essence of flowers, further improving your ability to capture the flower's emotional impact. You'll also learn how to see nature's beauty like Vera, which will improve your artist's intuition, your ability to interpret scenes and subjects instead of simply copying photos. Vera will show you key techniques such as multi-layering of pastel to create picturesqueness, how to use soft pastels to create beautiful details, how to create the illusion of volume and depth, and so much more. She's also going to reveal a unique process called contrast intensification that will transform the way you paint flowers. No matter your level of experience, this video is a must-have if you love pastel and floral paintings. Order Vera Kavura's Painting the Flowers of Ukraine today and learn the methods to harness the emotional powers of flowers. I became interested in making art when I was a small child. My grandfather was an artist. I never saw him because uh, he died too early. But he left some paintings. One of them was a picture of roses in the black background. I was really impressed uh, by how realistic the flowers were. So I decided uh, to become an artist like my grandfather. I uh, studied at the art school and uh, I got used to taking a sketchbook, pencils and charcoal with me in any trip and uh, art became a part of my life. However, uh, after graduation I entered Faculty of Economics and uh, didn't know to paint for a long time. Uh, later I took some lessons um, <clears throat> from a professional artist I painted with oil, but my love to charcoal turned me to soft pastels. My first experience of trying this um, technique was strange. Uh, pastel was of low quality, but I was uh, confident that it's my tool. Once I tried the professional pastel set, I fell in love with it. Uh, when I faced uh, some difficulties in my art process, uh, it inspired me to work hard and uh, to improve my technique and uh, practice more. There are two moments um, of the art process uh, that make me happy. The first one, when I saw, see beautiful flowers and uh, imagine the final picture. This expectation uh, inspires me very much. The second uh, moment, when I see the final result uh, and it exceeds my expectations, it's surprising and exciting. Being an artist for me is not only to create a beautiful picture, but to express the mood. That's uh, why I use pure, uh, vibrant colors. Uh, they give the um, feeling of joy and happiness. Um, speaking about being an artist, uh, I like to feel inspiration in the art process and even more uh, when uh, this feeling is conveyed to other people who see my pictures uh, and share these emotions, uh, this leads to emotional exchange.
Any piece of art uh, is kind of uh, self-portrait. Uh, what people uh, feel uh, while looking at my picture is a mirror of my own soul. Ideal subject uh, to paint for me is the life flowers. They differ in shapes and the colors. People have always admired the beauty of flowers. In school I painted uh, mainly still lives uh, and if we had flowers they were not given much uh, space on canvas. However, I wanted to make them the main and the only subject. Uh, that is why flowers dominate in my pictures. Of course, uh, I also paint other subjects such as uh, seascape. I love painting the sea um, by the variety of mood, colors and light. Painting from life is important to me because I'm always in contact uh, with uh, flowers. They are alive, they turn to the sunlight. Uh, and the petals move and I capture this moment in my drawing. I would describe my uh, painting style as realistic flowers in their life moment. I found my own style uh, by painting a lot from life during uh, five years. I discovered uh, various uh, flowers, learned their names and uh, special features. I created a lot of bouquets uh, and painted them. You can see a lot of um, different colors by looking at the flowers in the daylight. Sometimes I think uh, my bouquets look strange, but uh, when I got to know that uh, some florists um, follow me in social uh, networks uh, and learn from me, uh, I was really surprised. Students mainly ask me um, about how long uh, it takes me to paint a picture. I, it usually takes me uh, about one, two or three hours to complete the painting. Some people uh, and artists uh, believe that technique is the most important. However, in my opinion, art is created in the soul and then transferred to the paper. Uh, one tip students uh, should know is um, learn from uh, nature and uh, have more practice. Uh, with every work my result improves and it motivates me to continue. Painting uh, for me is a way to express my feeling and communicate with people. Uh, beautiful pictures always inspire because if one person could create it, then the other can also do it. Flowers adorn the most important events of our lives, weddings, birthdays, and so much more. They represent joy and pleasure, friendship and purity, forgiveness and also death. Few artists can successfully capture what flowers represent. Fortunately, there's a simple way to do it. Vera Kavura is a Ukrainian artist who has mastered the art of floral paintings and she's going to show you how to harness the emotional power of flowers to captivate your viewers. In her brand new video, Painting the Flowers of Ukraine, Vera is going to show you a counterintuitive approach to painting flowers just by using colors to create shape and form. No drawing, sketching, or long preparation needed. All you have to do is follow along and listen as Vera demonstrates two different bouquets, spring flowers and irises. Vera will also share insights to help you understand the true essence of flowers, further improving your ability to capture the flower's emotional impact. You'll also learn how to see nature's beauty like Vera, which will improve your artist's intuition, your ability to interpret scenes and subjects instead of simply copying photos. Vera will show you key techniques such as multi-layering of pastel to create picturesqueness 
how to use soft pastels to create beautiful details, how to create the illusion of volume and depth, and so much more. She's also going to reveal a unique process called contrast intensification that will transform the way you paint flowers. No matter your level of experience, this video is a must-have if you love pastel and floral paintings. Order Vera Kavura's Painting the Flowers of Ukraine today and learn the methods to harness the emotional powers of flowers.